Good evening, friends. Oh, I hope you're all having an amazing day and that you had a great weekend. I know that mine was actually quiet. We don't want to tell too many people about that. That might have been the case, but it was. And it was kind of nice to not have 10 things on the calendar, but to get a lot of things done that I wanted to. And just to, for Ron and I just to be able to go to Manhattan and um, have just a, a day kind of to do what we wanted to do. It was kind of fun. So I have to say, I, I'm, I'm ready for it now to be fall permanently, not, you know, this... We're going to be fall for a day, and then we're going to be up in the 90s again, and then we're going to be back down again. I'd like for it to kind of taper off. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, I guess that'll happen in the next week, maybe. It looks like we've got a few more days of being warm, and then looks like rain and a major cool down, which uh, by about 20 degrees. I'm not going to complain about that one, let me tell you. Anyway, well, I hope you're ready. Uh, Genesis, we're going to be on chapter 44, uh, is where we're going to start tonight. Uh, we're going to wait just about a minute, and then we'll get started, because I have to answer one question. And, and this one troubled me, too, a little bit. And I had to really go back and do some research um, on how to answer this question. And, and I actually went back, I had to went back to the Hebrew to see how it was written to see if there was clarity, because it depends on how you want to read um, a couple of verses, whether, uh, which way to interpret it. And, and I think you could almost make a case for both, but I think that I have unraveled the mystery of how to interpret a verse. And so um, we're going to, I'm going to catch up with that here in just a second. Uh, let's begin with prayer, though, right now. And so just pause, breathe. God, we are just so grateful for everything you've given us. You've given us so much, and yet we sometimes forget. So God, just be with us. Hold us, keep us safe, especially our farmers now that harvest has begun. We ask this in your name. Amen. Okay, the question goes back to verse 43, verse 12. And it goes back to, And silver two times overtake in your hand, and the silver that was returned in the mouth of your packs return in your hand. That is the verse that tends to tell me they took the original money, the coins that were in the top of their bags, and double um, the what the price would be, anticipating that there would be an increase in prices of the commodities, of the corn, of the grains. And in 21 um, and 23, it's kind of the same thing, uh, in which... I, I from re, going back and looking at the Hebrew, I do think verse twelve is accurate. They took and silver two times what they thought they would need in anticipation that the cost would be higher. Okay, and they also took the original in their bags in their hand to give. Okay. So the good question, because that really could have been interpreted, they just took the coins that they originally had and one time. I don't think so. I think from the Hebrew, it does look like it was two times. Again, in anticipation of inflationary prices. Hmm. That's kind of what it is now, isn't it? Hmm. Go to the store and spend more than what we did um, a year ago. Look at the price of gas and those kind of things, too. So that's how I think I would understand that. Uh, like I said, I went back to the Hebrew uh, to look at how it's written to see if I could. And that's what I gleaned um, out of that. 
I had to chuckle today as I was doing my devotions and looking at my thing on my desk and everything that I used because it is so true. We are to open our ears, open ears, hear the word of God, right? We have two ears. So we're to listen to the ears of, uh, hear, the, hear the word of God, but open mouths declare it. How often do we declare the word of God? And I think that's, for many of us good Lutherans, we don't tend to want to say anything. We kind of want to just keep it quiet. Like everyone's going to know who we are as God's people. But anyway, I, it was just one of my um, moments this morning. And actually, I've looked at it several times and had to go, yeah. Okay, so let's get started. Chapter 44, okay? Verse 1. Now he commanded the steward of his house, saying, okay, now remember, this is Yosef, is commanding his steward that's in his house, fill the men's packs with food as much as they are able to carry. Okay, he did that because of the great affection and that he wanted them to have plenty. Now, remember, there's a little bit of slyness going on here, okay? Um, Yosef is getting ready, really, to again continue testing his brothers. Okay, so we have to remember that, that there's a little bit of this going on. He also has sympathy and empathy, both for his brothers, because he knows that they are um, who they are. They don't know him yet, remember? They don't recognize him yet. Okay. And put each man's silver in the mouth of his pack. Okay. This is, okay, they would have, when they returned, they did repay. Okay. So they handed the steward, remember at the greenery, they handed them the money. So it's not that money. Okay. So don't even think that this is the same thing going on. Okay. This is different. Okay. So put each man's silver in it in the mouth of his pack. But because the steward, even at the time, noted that the debt was paid. So it's not that now they are they, they've now paid for what they received. Okay. So however much it costs them this time, that is now being turned around and put back in their packs again. Okay, so even if it was double the cost because of inflationary value of the grains, it's now being put back in again, but it's not the same money that it was. Oh, but in verse 2, and, and my goblet, the silver goblet, put it in the mouth of the youngest pack, along with the silver for his rations. Okay. The interesting thing about the goblet is it was really connected to divination. Divine, kind of like the divining rod. Okay, divination. And it would have been used by pagan, for in pagan worship. Now, I don't think Yosef had it ever as part of pagan worship at all. I think it was just, it was the silver cup that is part of his position that he held because he could, he could interpret the dreams, okay? I think that's why that was there. And it really was about interpreting water movements. It was called hyd hydromancy. It's a big word. I don't like that word. It's about water movement that kind of like um, divining for water, you know, finding water. It would have been a sacred vessel. It would have been a sign of the office that he held. Um, in, in our culture, I would almost relate it, but it's not the same. Um, when we are ordained, often anyway, um, we are given a chalice and a paten, the cup and the, and the plate for communion as a gift 
as we are being ordained. Um, I was given one. I have a gold set that were given to me as part of my ordination rites. And so that cup is say, is important. It's not sacred. I mean, I've used it in worship before. And I think that's kind of what this cup would have been for Yosef. It would have been a sign of his position. Okay. And really that cup was put in the younger brothers and Benjamin's um, pack to see the si the reaction of the brothers. They're all getting their coinage back. Okay, all of them would have paid X amount of coinage for the grain that they would have had in their packs. Okay, each of them would have paid. And so all of that's going back and the silver chalice is going back in as well. Um. Okay, uh, he did according to Yosef's word, which he had spoken. So the steward did exactly what Yosef had asked him to do. Put the coins back, put the cup in. Okay, again, remember this is all part of the plot, or it's all part of the story of testing the brothers. Okay, verse 3. At morning light, the men were sent off. They and their asses, all their animals. Okay, so they left. Verse 4. I think this is starting to get interesting. And they were just outside the city. They had not yet gone far. They had maybe gone to Tanis. So they had maybe a very short um space that they would have maybe gone, like maybe to Tanis, so they wouldn't have gone far. When Yosef said to the steward of his house, <laughs> up, pursue the men, and when you have caught up with them, say to them, why have you paid back ill for good? Now, I, I would guess highly that the steward was well affair, aware of the plan. He was already, had been enlightened into what was going to happen. He had been told. This was not going to be like, you mean like I have to saddle up the horses now? No. He would have been aware of what was going on. He would have been ready to go with his men, with whoever he would have taken with him. He would have been aware of that. And and then I think it's interesting that the question, why have you paid back ill for good? Why are you so ungrateful after being entertained? You know, it's kind of that question. We've done the, all these things for you. We've cared for you. Yosef has cared for you. Uh, it, but Yosef is still also playing a role. He's testing this cup would have been punishable by death for taking. So there's a test going on here still, isn't there? For you and me, are there times maybe we feel like we are being tested? Maybe challenged in our faith. Challenged to reach out beyond, to do more than. Verse 5, is not this goblet the one that my Lord drinks with? And he also divines, yes, divines with it. Now, again, we don't think Joseph was using, doing pagan worshiping here either. You have wrought ill in what you have done. Hmm. So that's what he's supposed to be saying to them. When he catches up with them, he's naming it out there. He's calling it for what it is. Very clearly, why are you doing this when we've done so much good for you? Again, remember the plot here. Verse 6. 
when he caught up with them, they were probably using some very swift horses. They didn't have all the animals. They weren't loaded animals either. They would not have gone far. So this would have been a fairly quick trip out for the steward and his men. He spoke those words to them. He told them exactly what Yosef had said. He was to repeat those words exactly to his brothers. Now, recognize that all of the brothers left. All left. None were left behind. Only one brother was missing from leaving that day. Verse 7, they said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as this? This may have been Judah who spoke. Spoke? Okay, spoke. And he was wondering about the charges that are being lobbed against them. Why? What is going on here? Can you see them kind of going, We're, wh what are you talking about? Heaven forbid for your servants to do such a thing. So they're protesting the guilt completely. Verse 8. Here the seven, the silver that we found in the mouth of our packs, we return to you from the land of, um, Can Can uh, land of Canaan. Okay, so they're, they're trying to prove their honesty from the first time. We've already returned everything. What are you talking about? I mean, they don't know yet what has been put in their packs again. They're trying to say, no, we didn't do anything. We already returned that to you. <laughs> so they think. So how could we steal silver or gold from the house of your Lord? How could they? They're wondering, how could they have been caught? How could they have done this? They were, they, we'd been there, but we didn't do anything. Can you hear Judah? Uh, protesting. Protesting. Saying, no, we didn't do anything. What do you think? What are you accusing us of? Oh, my. Whew. I don't know. Can you imagine? Verse 9. He with whom it is found among your servants, he shall die. Death would have been harsh for a crime like this anyway. So it's interesting that that threat is being put out there, that there would be death. It, that's not the punishment that would have happened for, for the silver cup missing. And we also will become my Lord's servants as long as they live, they, they um, if you find something, okay, but we haven't done anything. Verse 10, he said, now as well, according to your word, so be it. He with whom it is found shall become my servant, but you shall be clear. Okay, this is about Yosef. Um, it, they could be free if, if, but they're still speaking in Yosef's name. Verse 11, <laughs> with haste, each man let down his pack to the ground. Each man opened his pack. <laughs> they did it quickly because they were afraid of what? What 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 was in them? Now they're concerned. It's like, wait a minute, this happened once before. Now did it, what happened now? Verse 12, and then he searched. This is the servant, okay, Yosef's servant. With the eldest he started and with the youngest he finished. Hmm. And the youngest, and the goblet was found in Benjamin's pack. Okay. They looked throughout their pack, not just what was on top either. You know, it's interesting that 
the, Reuven would have been the oldest, and yet he is not the one who's doing the speaking now. This is probably Judah. Um, he, there's a little inside knowledge, though, going on. Um, obviously, to go oldest to youngest, because of the way they were seated at the table, which only Yosef would have known. And again, the brothers just don't get how anyone knows their ages and who's oldest and youngest. And, and yet, the cup, you know, it's, it, it, the, this inside knowledge is being missed by everyone. I mean, no one's quite figured out yet how anyone knows oldest to youngest or anything. Um, you know, uh, let me go back to verse two a minute about the, and, and this is really about the goblet. Go, if we think back, we have to go back a long ways. Do you remember back when we were, this is kind of parallel to that scene with Rahel in the theft of the teraphim. Do you remember that? This parallels that very closely. So back in, um, um, verse in, Chapter 31, 32, I believe, um, is where we find that story um, unfolding. So there is a parallel in, in this theft, okay, that's going on here, that kind of does echo and harken back for us a little bit. Okay, verse 13. Okay, now, remember... Where did they find the goblet? Oh, yeah. They have found it in Benjamin's pack. Poor Benjamin. I'm going to tell you, these brothers are now in distress. And you need to remember what they promised um, Israel when they left with Benjamin. Verse 13. They rent their clothes because they were in pain and suffering. And remember that that's what that means. It's about being in pain and suffering. And this is really about the second test and the devotion to Benjamin that's being shown here by the brothers. Okay. And that's part of what um, Yosef also needed as part of the story. Each man loaded up his ass, and they returned to the city. They returned immediately. They did not pass go. They did not go home. They went back to the city then and there. Verse 14. Now, again, Judah, Judah is speaking. It's not Reuben. Judah and his brothers came into Yosef's house. He was still there. Hmm. He was waiting. He knew they wouldn't be long. He was waiting for them to return. He wasn't at the granary. He was waiting to see his brothers return because this was the second test that they had. And they flung themselves down before him to the ground. Another part of the dream was being fulfilled. This is part of the dreaming that is fulfilled. See, if we go back to chapter 37, verses 5 to 8, now Yosef dreamt a dream and told it to his brothers. From then on, they hated him still more. And he said to them, pray here this dream that I have dreamt. Here we were binding sheaf bundles out in the field. And here my sheaf arose and it was standing upright. And here your sheaves were circling round and bowing down to my sheaf. And in 42.6, no, in 40, 46, when Yosef came to them in the morning and saw them, 
here they were dejected. No, well, you know what? I think it may have been 42.6. I think I may have I may have gotten that one that one wrong in my notes that I was doing. Yeah, it was it's it is 42.6. And Yosef's brothers came and bowed low to him and browed to the ground. They were pleading for Benjamin at this point. They, and, and for Yaakov. I mean, let's face it, for Yaakov as well. They are face down. They are in absolute submission. Totally prostrate to the ground. This is the last time that they bow. It's interesting. It is part of the dream coming true. Now, Yosef said to them in verse 15, What kind of deed is this that you have done? Oh, I will tell you. He is still having to play the act. He is having to act stern. He is having to, to maybe seem a little wicked, ungrateful, angry. I don't think this was a, hey, dudes, what are you doing to my bro to, to your brother here? I think this is, again, teaching them a lesson, maybe. Do you know, not know that a man like me can divine? Yes, divine. The act is continuing. He doesn't divine. He's definitely God's child. That's not the case. But the act is continuing for the moment. Verse 16. Judah said, okay, he is really, you know, uh, Reuben, uh, he really has, he's outclassed. Um, I, I mean, he's out, uh, Judah, Judah has outclassed Reuben. Um, even though he, Reuben was the oldest. Uh, Judah's really the one who has taken that role and has stood up to be the man. The one with class, maybe. What can we say to my Lord? See, his heart had changed. The providence of God has been acknowledged. What can we speak? And listen to the we on this one a little bit. We. What can we speak? By what? Oh, here's another we. And I, I didn't get all of them marked. I had been marking them. What can... But what can we show our can we show ourselves innocent? God has found out your servant's crime. Here we are. So huh, we. So the one in whose hand the goblet was found. See, there was an admission of guilt, an admission of sin, an admission even of selling Yosef. The cup wasn't stolen. But see, their freedom and their homeland had been from Yosef. From Yosef. Punishment from God was now to be accepted. Listen to those words. What can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? By what can we show ourselves innocent? God has found out your servant's crime. The selling of Yosef is what that's talking about. Here we are, servants to my Lord. So we, so the one in whose hand the goblet was found. Admission of guilt? Yes. Have their charts changed? Yes. Are they turning? From their ways. It sounds like it. Okay, verse 17. But he said, 
heaven forbid, that I should do this. The man in whose hand the goblet was found, he shall become my servant. But you go in peace to your father. Yosef wanted to keep Benjamin. He wanted to keep him safe. He was afraid Benjamin would be at the same curse that he suffered from his brothers. He was not going to die had he stayed with Yosef. And Yosef was now sending his brothers on back to their father. With their corn, with their goods, no charges would be filed against them. Look at verse 18. Now Judah came closer to him and said, he, so he had he had courage to move closer. He didn't want to whisper, but he wants to be heard. He wants to be listened to. Maybe open ears hear the word of God, and open mouths declare it. Maybe that's now what Yuda is thinking life should be. Please, my Lord, he says, pray let your servant speak a word in the ears of my Lord. He wants to be heard and he wants to be listened to. This is not vindictive. This is not a secret either. This is about wanting to be heard in the right tone of a humble man whose heart has been changed. And do not let your anger rage against your servant. So hear me patiently, Judah says. For you are like Pharaoh. See, he has the power to pardon. Yosef can release all. Not just part of the boys. He could release them all. Will he? Verse 19. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Do you have a father or another brother uh, or another brother? Now, he asked kind of these same questions the first time they were in Egypt regarding the family. What I found interesting is in these verses from 18 through the end of this chapter is really about a plea for mercy. It's about including in this plea Yaakov's, um, Israel's age, their father's age, are trying to be used by Yaakov, or by um, Judah to convince Yosef to maybe keep himself, not Benjamin. It would have been devastating Because a change had been made. There had been so much doting over the youngest. And there would have been shock and loss for Yaakov. You know what? Unfortunately, it is time to stop. And the time goes so, so quickly for us, doesn't it, my friends? This is, we're going to stop. I know, I don't want to either. I want us to be able to continue on. But it's a good place to end our story. And we'll start on verse 18 the next time. And now, my friends, join me on Wednesday for Revelation. Let's see what kind of things are happening there. My friends, I hope and pray you have an amazing week. Be safe. And for my farmers, stay safe as we, and for all of us out driving right now with all the big machinery on the, on the roads, stay safe. And may our Lord bring us back. He has walked with us. He goes with us. He carries us. 
and he guides us closer to him in all that we do. And so, my friends, go in peace, knowing that God is with you from this day forward. See you Wednesday. Bye.